seven? How are you doing today? You want to you want to raise this thing or not? You gonna keep that up? No, I'm just gonna be walking. It says I'm up high today. I don't like to be confined behind behind the pulpit. I'm, I'm sorry, and I, and I please forgive me for that. I like to I like to see my people. People. All right. Um, I was driving from I think it was Tennessee to Mississippi. Pretty close, relatively close few hours away. Thank you. And um, I was going to visit my brother. He worked at Bass Memorial Academy. It's a boarding academy in, in Mississippi. So I was driving to go visit him. And I, at the time, it was just me and my wife. We hadn't had kids yet. And we're on our way driving there. And we're almost there. We're literally minutes away. We turned down this road. And my brother said, once you turn on that road, it's only a couple minutes away. Only five to ten minutes away. So I'm like, okay, cool, I turned on the road. It was before GPS's, I didn't have a GPS. I just had some sheet of paper that said certain miles. So I was looking at the little speedometer where it said how many miles, because we don't go by kilometers in the States, so sorry. Um, just just pretending like it, okay, certain amount of kilometers. So I'm looking at, at the thing, and I'm driving, and I'm talking with my wife, Alana, and we're talking, nothing important, just, just talking. And um, so we're just chatting away, and I'm driving, and I'm, and all of a sudden I look down at the, the mileage thing, and it was supposed to be five miles into it. I now realized we were at six miles. I'm like, okay, well, maybe the map quest thing is wrong. So I kept driving. Seven, eight, nine miles. And I'm like, but. It said five miles, there's no way they could have gotten it that wrong. I followed that quest before, it's never been this wrong. I go a few more miles. I go to about 15 miles and finally I said, Alana, I think, I think we've passed it somehow. We must have missed it. And so we turn around and we go the other direction. I'm going the other direction, I minus count, I'm, I'm, I'm paying real close attention this time, and then finally we see it and I, and I turn in. And when I looked at what I missed, I was a little embarrassed because the sign for the school was huge. It was from the floor to about here, all right? About a half the stage long, right out in front. I drove past this sign without even blinking. I, I was like, Alana, did you, did you see the sign on the way in? She's like, no. So he we went in, I was like, I told my brother that we were only five minutes away. Half an hour later, he's like, hey, what took you so long? I was like, uh, well, we kind of drove by the school. He's like, why? Well, we missed it. We didn't see the sign. And he started to laugh at me. Oh, no one ever misses that sign. The sign's huge. It's well lit. What were you doing? I was like, I don't know. We, we were just talking. So easy to pass it when, when, when you're a little bit distracted. And here's the thing, I wasn't even distracted by anything big. It was just me and my wife were just chatting and it, it was really nothing important. We weren't even, we weren't arguing, we weren't talking about philosophies of life. It was probably about ice cream. Amen. That's probably what it was about. Did you have ice cream today? Oh yeah, it was super great. And we just drove right by this huge sign that said, this is where you need to be. It's so easy to be distracted, so easy not to see what you need to see sometimes. Because you're engaged in something else, or you're looking at something else, or not looking where you should be looking. Let's go, let's go into the Bible right now. Let's go. We're going to go to Luke 10. It's a well-known story. It was the verse of the day. So if you don't have a Bible, just, just listen. It's a good way. We're not going to put words on the screen, so... It's going to take some extra concentration. Are you ready? Amen. Okay, one person is ready. Awesome. <laughs> All right, here we go. Starting at Luke 10 verses. And we'll just go with verse 38. We'll read the whole story. And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what she said. 
But Martha was distracting. By all the preparations that she had made. Now, I think some of you have been in this situation before. I've been in this situation before. Oops. My wife is constantly in this situation with me. Where you're busy doing something. Something important. And you're busy talking or you're busy getting something done. And you see someone kind of relaxing. On the couch. Watching TV or chatting away. And you're busy at this wasp meeting or something. Who knows what it is. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. You're busy, intent, working real hard. Maybe you want to leave early. Maybe you want to get the dishes done. But there, your husband is there chatting away about the soccer games. And you're trying to get these dishes done. And all of a sudden, I've been here many times. I'm trying to get something done. And I see someone just slacking off. And we can all relate to this. We can all relate to what Martha's feeling. She's not feeling anything uncommon or crazy even. She's feeling something logical and makes sense. It makes sense that she was upset at this point. Because she's she has guests in her home. A special guest. The Rabbi Jesus. The Teacher Jesus. The Savior Jesus. And so she's preparing a glorious meal for him. She's busy cleaning up, busy doing things. And there's her sister Mary. Just sitting at his feet. Giggling and talking. What, what, what is she doing? Here I am, slaving, working away for our guest. And she's doing nothing. She felt like she was doing all the work. She was doing everything that needed to be done. So she goes and she talks straight to Jesus. All right, let's keep reading. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations she had to make. She came to him and asked him, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to work all by myself? Tell her to help me. Sounds logical. Here is a good teacher. Here is, here is someone who, is, who has actually told us to do work. Who has actually told us to go out and preach to the nations. Who has told us to evangelize. The, the Bible is full of places where God, where Jesus has told us to go work. There are few workers. And so she's thinking, all right, here I am working for Jesus. Here I am working away, striving away. But while she's working, she doesn't realize what's happening to her. She looks at her sister and she says, she's not working. There she is sitting at Jesus' feet. So she goes to Jesus. Jesus, here I am working all by myself. Don't you care that my sister, who should be helping me, is not helping me? Tell her to help me, Jesus. Tell her to help me. Now we all know the story. We've all heard it before. And we think, well, you know, chill out, Martha. Take a chill pill. Relax. But I think many of us have also been in Martha's shoes. And maybe... If we think about it deeply, how hard it might be to actually relax. So Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. Distractions. So easy to get distracted. Martha was distracted, but what was she distracted by? Her work. The preparations. Now it's very interesting to me because who is she working for? Who is she preparing for? Jesus. When you think about it that way, she was preparing, she was working for Jesus, it's logical that she's doing the right thing. But there's a, the specific word, distracted. She was distracted by her work, distracted by her preparations. She was forgetting to focus in on what she should be focusing on. As I was driving down that road to Bass, I was doing something wonderful. I was talking with my wife. Isn't that great? We were discussing. There's nothing wrong with that. 